Things have quieted down atop Kilauea, but it's a different story in the Lower East Rift Zone. According to the Hawaii County Civil Defense, vent number 22 opened this morning within Leilani Estates. And a lot of the other vents have rejuvenated. Forty structures, mostly homes, have also burned. Luckily for residents in the area, the trade winds are back, so that's pushed the sulfur dioxide away. Marissa Yamani joins us now from the Big Island with the latest. Marissa? Hi, Joe. Happening now, officials are flying in by helicopter into that evacuated zone to see if anybody needs to be rescued. Earlier today, the lava cut off Pohoiki Road, potentially uh, trapping some homes in the area. Whether or not people were actually in their homes at the time, uh, that's, that remains to be seen. But certainly, a lot of the activity today is down in Leilani Estates. The lava destroys, but it also creates building new land. New fissures are still opening up with number 21 and 22 cracking open Thursday night and Friday morning. Um, it is an upsurge in activity, yes. Uh, and it is, like I said, concentrated in the downrift portion of this uh, line of fissures. And some of the other fissures have also become active again. Like fissure 17, which we saw from the side of Pahoa Kapoho Road, spatter shooting up. This fissure certainly has been one of the most active and dynamic Madame Pele's fireworks. We are seeing more uh, fluid lavas, uh, type behavior, uh, but basically the s most activity is on the northeast end of the fissure line, 17, 18. The fissure 15 lava flow crossed Pohuiki uh, this morning. Not only are new fissures opening up, but also the cracks in the roads keep getting bigger and bigger by the day. It's still a very volatile situation here in Leilani Estates. Poles and lines continue to fall with the ground swelling and cracking. Leilani Estates residents are still being allowed to go back to their homes during the daylight hours. That is, if their homes are even still accessible. This came out of Fisher Number 9, turning Kupono Street into a dead end street. And so, you know, people need to be reminded that one, the activity continues. This is far from being over. We spoke with Dara Oliveira, who was in charge of the county's emergency response during the Pahoa lava flow four years ago. The difference between 2014 and this is, you know, how quickly this event unfolded with little, you know, uh, time, lead time for residents. And it's occurring right in their backyards, right in their property. Versus in 2014, we had some lead time where the you know, origination from the flows and how far away and then the speed at which it was moving so the community could prepare and ramp up. With this, it's happening instantaneously. The other thing that's very different is the sulfur dioxide, the plumes and high levels of the toxic fumes associated with this current eruption. So much so that Lani Puna Gardens residents haven't been allowed to go back home since the evacuations began two weeks ago. So different challenges, very unique issues. But again, the community is a very resilient, tough community working together and everybody pitching in and helping each other out. So, Despite the destruction thus far, there's still a lot left standing in Leilani Estates. A lot of lush greenery, and you can understand why folks chose to live here despite being on an active volcano.